The Florida Panthers get back to their style of play, control the pace of play, and even though they struggled on the power play to start the game, they broke the Edmonton Oilers' PK streak and take a 2-0 series lead in the Stanley Cup Final. Your Locked On Panthers, your daily podcast on the Florida Panthers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And welcome into this Tuesday, June 11th edition of the Locked On Florida Panthers podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, where it's your team every day. Thank you for making the Locked On Florida Panthers podcast your first listen of the day. I'm Armando Velez from the Hockey News. You can follow me on X at Monoman12. Follow show count on X and Instagram at LO underscore F L A Panthers and shout out to the everydayers who come back here and get your daily Florida Panthers fix. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make up a moment more right now. New customers get $200 in bonus bets with any $5 bet. That's $200 in bonus bets with any $5 bet. So visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started. So the Florida Panthers, they go into this one from, from Amherst bank arena and protect home ice in a game where the Florida Panthers really flipped the script. This is something that we even spoke about even after game one, that this was not the the Panthers being pinned in their own zone. If they wanted, if they were going to play that style of play of game, that it was not going to be something sustainable for the Florida Panthers and, and really for, for them credit to them on, on getting in on their four check, not allow it, not when you have the Edmonton Oilers set up in their own end, it makes an advantage for them. And even with the Edmonton Oilers missing some pieces, finishing mostly with 11, 11 forwards and 5D for them, the Florida Panthers really take advantage. And even trailing early, early on for, for them, they still get the, the 4-1 win behind two goals from Evan Rodriguez and, and Sergey Bobrovsky's spectacular once again for but joining me on this post-game edition of the Lockdown Florida Panthers podcast, he has been a guest here on the show before. He is South Florida native and, and Panther fan and host of Locked On Syracuse, Jackson Holzer. Jackson, welcome back to the show. Uh, I know that you've been here uh, quite a bit on when it come, came to losses, but finally for you, for you to come back here for a win, my friend, as the Panthers take a two nothing lead in the Stanley cup final, the very first time we could say this. Well, we can lose all the games we want with me on the show, but if they win the Stanley cup, it doesn't matter. Right. <laughs> I mean, they did beat the Canadians in the regular season. That was the first time I was on. And then they lost a couple of games, yeah. including a playoff game, which wasn't fun. And I ripped Bobrovsky to shreds. Good that I did because maybe it motivated him. And hey, now I'm two and two being on here, so it's great to be on, Armando. Thank you for having me on. Absolutely, man. And 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 you 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 were talking about ripping Bobrovsky, but even even for the Panthers, I mean, think about for for them. I mean, after giving up that goal on the four on four, uh, where where a, a pinch by Ekblad and then get McDavid getting it out to to Matthias Ekholm and then it getting through the five hole. That was the first goal that Bobrovsky had given up in on five hole throughout the postseason. And all the talk about was about getting going to Bobrovsky high, because when you saw those breakaways in game one for them, it was all low. So, I mean, so, so for, for the, for the goaltender, I mean, still great. That's still, they're not getting the goals up high. And even through 120 minutes, your only goal against is on, on a four on four, but for the Panthers getting back to their, their four check, their style of play, their, their, and and having Edmonton set up too. I mean, for for them getting even though that first one for the the Panthers in in that second period, Nico Mikola almost knocks it into their own net, and then going up the ice, and then Lundell. What can you say about Lundell? Eyes on the back of his head to get that drop to Nico Mikola to beat uh, Stuart Skinner past the glove. And I mean, three <laughs> Mikola has scored five goals this season. Three of them have been against the Edmonton Oilers. Two of them back in November. He's an Oilers so. killer. So it, it's great. It's crazy to think that an unlikely goal scorer, something I spoke about even in previewing game one, I want to see more depth scoring. And every single person who touched, who touched the puck uh, for as far as getting on the score sheet, it wasn't the superstars for the Panthers outside of Ekblad getting that empty netter. But what are your thoughts about just the Panthers getting, getting some depth scoring for them? I think it's huge. I think this was a game where the stars of the team didn't really show up. I mean, Matthew Kachuk was not on his A game tonight. 
I'm pretty sure that Sam Reinhart was caught in traffic heading into the game. I mean, I understand there's a lot of fans there, so he might have left the, his house late or something. I mean, he wasn't in the building tonight. A lot of the stores just weren't there. I, I was watching with my friend and we kept on saying, you know, where's this person? Where's that person? But when you get that depth scoring at this time of year, this is the difference between the Oilers and the Panthers. And it was really funny heading into this series, l- looking at people breaking down the lineups. And I'm like, the, the Oilers are a one-line, two-line team. That's really what they are. If McDavid and Dreisaitl are not producing for this team, and they haven't yet, and that's not to say that they won't, but they haven't so far, who else is going to store for them? When Matthew Kachuk is not producing, when Alexander Barkov, who I thought played well, but isn't getting on the store sheet, when Carter Verhage is not finding the mark, who's going to step up for the team? Well, it's Nico Mikola. That's very Mm -hmm. unlikely. So, okay, you can count that as a one-off. But how about Evan Rodriguez? Two goals in the third period. That's huge. And then in the series. Aaron Eckblad had his ups and downs in this game, but he gets the empty netter and that sealed it. Wasn't the coming into the series, if you would have thought that the Panthers were going to score four goals and it was going to be two from Erod, one from Mikola, and one from Eckblad, you probably wouldn't have thought that was going to happen. But that's the difference between the Panthers and the Oilers. Yeah, and you think about with the with the Edmonton Oilers scratching Cody Cece, bringing Vincent De, De Harnay uh, for a little bit of size there for for the Oilers, and also scratching Cor- Corey Perry there and bringing Warren Fogle who got who collided knee on knee with Etu Lustrain. I mean, also a lot of scary moments too in the in the in this one too, where knee on knee for uh, for Etu with uh, Warren Fogle. Ekblad gets tied up with McDavid after stopping a, a a drive where he's going up in the neutral zone and then a battle in, in front just went Aaron, Aaron Ekblad only went down to the tunnel not even for two minutes and then went back so but also Alexander Barkov uh, late, late in the game taking we that do have an update on him yeah we have, oh. one. We so, have one right now it was Elliot Freeman just tweeted it he says no update no update from so. Paul Maurice uh so in my experience that is neither a good or a bad thing typically Usually in my, this, this is, I don't know what the injury is or anything like that, but when they say that there's no update immediately after the game, typically it means it's not severe, but it might not be ready for next game. Usually Mm -hmm. if, if someone's fine, they'll be like, he's fine. He's ready to go. If it's bad, then they'll be like, yeah, it's bad. It's bad. So no update probably means it, 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 it could go either way here, but I, I would say that's more optimistic than pessimistic in my opinion. The two days off surely do help for the Panthers here uh, as, as they're likely going to, going to practice right before heading, um, heading on a plane tomorrow uh, to Edmonton. So that's another thing that that's really crucial with these two day gaps, the long travel to 2,541, but who's counting all those miles for that travel that the Panthers are going to be can, going. Can on. I say something on that on the, on the miles and everything? Okay. I think it's been way overblown. Oh, in my yeah. opinion. Way overblown. These teams are getting on chartered flights. <laughs> all right. It's five, six hours. They played 82 games in the regular season. They've played a gauntlet of playoff games. They can go on a plane. They're going <laughs> on an airplane on a chartered flight. They got meals. They got all the medical care in the world. Read a book, watch they a couple poker. movies, play poker, play blackjack. I don't care. I <laughs> enough with the amount of miles between these two cities. It doesn't matter. They're on airplanes. Now, if this was 1920 and we're on horse and buggy, there might be a problem. But (laughs) we are in the 21st century. We got airplanes. We got chartered flights. It ain't that big of a deal. Watch a movie. Watch Harry Potter. I don't know. (laughs) Yeah. So so speaking of, the narration for game one was uh, from the actress of – that played Professor Umbridge, uh, Imelda Stoughton. So that's a note, speaking of Harry Potter. So, uh, so glad that you mentioned that too. But uh, also, let's discuss more about the power play that they really struggled to gain the zone uh, for the Panthers. I mean, credit to the credit to Edmonton Oilers out. They had multiple guys up on the blue line to not allow their cycle game going. But man, for for the Panthers, I mean, even on that five minute major where uh, OEL gets a little bit caught in the neutral zone after they clear. You, you only get three minutes out of those five and, and you don't score there for, for them, but crazy for, for the Panthers and just getting that uh, finally, finally getting the power play goal and for the Edmonton Oilers to get uh, to their streak on, on the kill ends at 34 uh, after Lundell centered that to 
at Evan Rodriguez on that on that entry. But not only not only the finishing by Evan Rodriguez, just the three goals in the last two games, but how Lundell has just been more confident with bringing the puck up the ice. And also at the end of the game, when it was a six on five or a five on four, I mean, there was penalties and five and, on three and at pull, one point. Pull, and, and pull, five on three for eight seconds and then pulling yeah. goal, um, Stuart Skinner, then bringing him back. But also Lundell being able to strip McDavid to get at least a clear two. That that was a real highlight for for me, for, for Lund, Lundell too, but also distributing both primary assists there too. Uh, so what, what, do you, what do you think about what Lundell's just how he's grown? Uh, so much this year he's an interesting player because honestly the last couple of regular seasons he hasn't been the most impressive player in the world to watch you watch him and he can sometimes disappear but for whatever reason it's really stemming back from last postseason as well he just seems to step up his game I, I don't know what exactly what it is but maybe it's just the playoffs better suits him the dump and chase style that the Panthers like to play Perhaps because it's now tighter in the playoffs, it helps him. I don't exactly know, but you can just see that he's got so much upside. He really does. He's going to make I mean, every point he puts up in this postseason is another, what, 25000 in his pocket for his next <laughs> contract. So yeah. he's playing for a contract too. I'm sure that helps. But with Lundell, to me, it's always been he just steps up his game in the postseason. So yeah, and and thank and for him how he finished the previous two series on a bang uh, with against Boston and against New York and just continuing that. I'm not I'm not as I'm not as uh, quick to say baby Barkov like a, a lot of other people say. But I was hey. like one of the first to call him baby Barkov. <laughs> so I'm not there. I'm not there because he's his own guy. I want him to have his own individuality too. That's what. That's also the other reason why too. <laughs> so it's true, but I, I I take it if he's as good as yeah. Alexander Barkov. Yes. I, I take it. I would not yeah. be upset. I won't neither, but we're going to transition over to segment number two, where we are going to discuss more about our three stars of the game and the moment when we thought the game was won. We're going to discuss that more next on Locked On Florida Panthers podcast. Today's episode is brought to you by Policy Genius. A lot of life is unpredictable, but good insurance plan gives your family a financial safety net to protect against your some of the unknowns. Policy Genius is the country's leading online insurance marketplace. It makes choosing the right policy for your family easy and quick. Policy Genius helps you easily compare your options from America's top insurers in just a few clicks. Your work life insurance policy may not offer enough protection for your family's needs. Even worse, it might not come with you if you leave your job. Policy Genius has no incentive to recommend one insurer over the other so you can trust their guidance. Get peace of mind by finding the right life insurance with Policy Genius. Head to policygenius.com or click on the link in the description to get your free insurance quotes and see how much you could save. That's policygenius.com. Segment number two on this Tuesday, June 11th edition of the Lockdown Florida Panthers podcast. Thank you once again for making the Lockdown Florida Panthers podcast your first listen of the day. And are you watching Fox Sports or ESPN on your TV all day? Have to turn down the volume with all that shouting? Make the switch to Lockdown Sports today, a free 24-7 sports streaming channel program for you every day to bring you the biggest stories without all the screaming. Lockdown Sports today brings you the can't miss analysis, opinions, and news. Streaming 24-7 on YouTube or the free Amazon Fire TV channels app. Part of the Lockdown Podcast Network, your team every day. Here with Jackson Holzer, he is a Panther fan, South Florida native, and the host of Locked On Syracuse. It's crazy. Once again, all the narrative about not, not having multiple fans, but two guys on Locked On ACC are also uh, Panthers fans. Jackson Holzer being one of them and Alex Dono being uh, the other one. So the Florida Panthers fan base, definitely big here. And and Ariana Grande for a second straight game, Jackson, it was in the building too. So for what whatever that is worth to us. But... She, she went to my middle school. Oh wow! North, North, North Broward Prep. No, fun fact. No, no, no. Didn't yeah. know that part. But uh, let's get to our three stars of the game uh, for for this one for the Florida Panthers. I, I mean, I hard to hard to not choose uh, these three guys, at least in my opinion. But Bobrovsky being the third star of the game, once again being spectacular, re- really recovered after giving up that. You maybe a goal that you he would like to have back after it going five hole. Uh, Anton Lundell, the two primary assists, and then Evan Rodriguez. What more can we say? Uh, I mean, think about how big it was to get him into the mix, signing him to term two, 
and just how he's able to shift up and down the lineup. You need him here. Uh, even Paul Marie spoke about how if you need to get for Hagee off that top line, it kind of refreshes them too. That's another thing with Rodriguez. And he hadn't really played with Kachuk too uh, until really in the postseason. So get, getting that trade for Duclair to clear up that space to bring him in. And then it's manifesting as a, as a playoff player. I mean, we spoke about even, I know I'm repeating myself from last podcast, but playing with Reinhardt in, in Buffalo and, 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 Crosby, uh, Nathan McKinnon too, and sh shining when you need to shine the mo the most in, in in a time like this. So Bobrovsky, Lundell, and Erod, who are your three? So I also agree. Obviously, Erod is the first star, but more on Erod. He, I remember when they signed him, and I was so thrilled, and not just because of his pure ability. Like he's a pretty good player. He's a solid middle six option if you were to just take him on face value. But really what he is, is a chameleon. He mm -hmm. can play with anyone. You on can move him too. lines one through four. It doesn't matter where you play him. He can produce anywhere. You want to put him with the best players in the world, like a Sidney Crosby, Nathan McKinnon, Alexander Barkov. You can do that. You want to put him on a gritty line with Sam Bennett and Matthew Kachuk. You can do that. You want to put him with the with the young kids like Lundell and Lusterine, and you can do that. And at times he's been on the fourth line too. He can play the fourth line as well. So he is really the Swiss Army knife of the team. He can go up and down the lineup. It doesn't matter. He doesn't complain. He is excellent for what he does. And Three more years of him is awesome. Definitely the first star, obviously. How about big Nico Mikola? Mm -hmm. I think he needs some love here. I'm going to give him at least one of the stars. He's got to get one. I mean, that was a huge goal because it almost felt like in reverse to game one, like, oh, now we're playing better. And this was my concern I expressed to you before the game, which was we might play better and we could lose. <laughs> like, it's entirely possible. Like, that's just how hockey goes. You never really know. And it was starting to kind of build that way. They're playing better than Edmonton. Edmonton had like seven shots through two periods, which is an NHL record for fewest amount. And then Mikola gets that goal. Mm -hmm. Changed everything. Yeah. Now it's a 1-1 game. Now you can just reset. You don't have to worry about, oh, we're out playing them and we're losing. No, it's, all right, we're out playing them and now we're tied. Much better feeling. So he yeah. gets a star. And I believe Sam Bennett also deserves a star. So I'm going a little bit off the board here. I thought he might have been their best player in the top six other than Erod. He was flying around out there. He missed a couple of opportunities. He had that one in the second period where... Oh, that went far side, yeah. yeah uh, I, off of Vortech, too. I mean, that was a great hook. I mean, I think Ray Ferraro said it was a nice hook of a driver. I mean, I'm a slicer myself, but that's basically how my driver looks in reverse if you were to go the other way. But I thought he was terrific tonight. Yeah, my driver, you would see it hook. I wouldn't see it, and then you would hear a splash uh, somewhere somewhere there. So. Mine, you would probably hear a window. <laughs> sorry, if, if you live near a golf course and I am playing golf, you're, you're in, I'm sorry. Yeah. So. I, I'm sorry. It's not my fault. Blame the clubs. Always the club's yeah, fault. It's it's always, always 10 times. Or the ball. 10. Sometimes it's the ball. Maybe the tee. It's never me. Like, I'm the greatest in the world at golf. Yes. <laughs> it's, it's just the clubs are, are failing me here. Maybe there's a hole in it. Yeah. So there's a few, there's a few moments that I was thinking about uh, when the game was won. Uh, and I, and I was stuck. Uh, I was stuck between the Mikola goal and, but I actually found, I actually found a moment, moment looking back uh, when, when, when I thought the Panthers won. Uh, it was that, that, that judgment call that the referees had to make about Kevin Stenling clearing the zone too. Oh. And, that's going to be reviewed next year, coming into coming into next year. So why it should just be reviewable now? I agree. I, I don't I, understand I, it. I do agree. I don't but get hey, it. The fact that it's going to be changed. I mean, it worked out for the Panthers. They they, they you can, so that one for me. The the Panthers. That was when the game was still tied at one, and the pan, and the Edmonton Oilers. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, they were already on the power play. So yeah, that was they were, that was they a, would have been a five was, on three. They could have been a five on three, and I'm just like, oh man. And the yeah, back that's two one. But at the same time, if you're if you're the referees, and you're looking at that moment, and you don't just don't have that access, you're probably thinking to yourself, "We don't want to decide the game. Let the players decide on a judgment call." So your moment when you thought the game was won for the Panthers. So I, I do want to comment that for a second, though. I I don't love the logic of we want to let the players decide the game because you have to call the game correctly. 
Like I understand, yeah. like you're gonna let yeah. some things slide. Like it, like my friend who I was watching with every single minute was like cross check, cross check, and I'm like, it's the Stanley Cup final, man. Like you can't call every cross yeah. check here. They're gonna call it when they feel like it. But that wasn't really a judgment call. That was whether if you saw it or not. Like yeah. you have to and call it was that so close to the blue line. And on replay, uh, I like know I'm a Panthers fan. But I will say objectively, I do think the puck exited outside of the zone. I think because he kind of sh- kind of bump- fumbled a little. Yeah, d- I think it was a little bit outside of the zone, but it was close. Mm-hmm. Certainly, it was close. I would say, yeah, I was nervous even when they were up two one. So the moment where I knew it was one when they made it three one. Okay, plain and simple. Yeah. You're up two one in the third period against the Oilers with ten minutes to go. So what? Like, so what? They got McDavid. They got Dreisaitl. They got Hyman. They, they got all these stars. When they made it 3-1, I knew it was over. And it was power play two. And shortly after, Barkoff went down the tunnel too. Yeah. So kind of doing it when your captain is not on the ice too. That is uh, that that for me uh, is is was a big moment in the game for, for the Panthers and just – Breathing, we know the Panthers when they do play with leads, they're they're able to stay back in, in especially in the neutral zone. So eliminating those rushes, the rushes, the rushes weren't egregious like Game One uh, right. for 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 the Panthers too. So that's another thing. They I adjusted. believe there was only one breakaway in this game. Yeah, that was the so, end of it. Yeah, so that 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 that's really for for the Panthers and their ability to just to just get get to their their game and and on on their forecheck and just frustrating them too because uh De Harnay went down the tunnel at the end Carrick went down uh, at at the end uh too and just game management had to take over after after that for for uh the, the referees at at the end when the Panthers were already up uh 3-1 and even before they even when it was 4-1 for them but we're going to transition over to segment number 3 where we're going to discuss the the Panthers how they continue to to win in multiple ways through the postseason and how they're learning to win at home. We're going to discuss that next here on the Locked On Florida Panthers podcast. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Summertime means baseball, the NBA Finals, the Stanley Cup Final, and more. And you can bet that all on FanDuel. Because right now, new customers get $200 in bonus bets with any $5 bet. That's $200 that you could use to bet on every, anything from the finals MVP, Con Smythe, to who's winning, uh, who's going to hit one out of the park. So so it, with the Stanley Cup final going on and, and the Panthers being up 2 nothing, you can go to FanDuel and you could possibly put sprinkle in some of your bets for maybe who you think your favorite is. For the con smite, is it going to be Alexander Barkov? Is it going to be Sergey Bobrovsky? Is it going to be Gustav Forsling? Who who is it going to be? You could look, uh, you could go to fanduel.com and place all those bets. So visit fanduel.com slash locked on and add a, a big win to your summer bucket list. Fanduel, America's number one sports book. Third and final segment here on this. Tuesday, June 11th edition of the Lockdown Florida Panthers podcast. Thank you once again for making the Lockdown Florida Panthers podcast your first listen of the day here on a Tuesday as the Florida Panthers defeat the Edmonton Oilers by a final score of 4-1 to one from Sunrise to take a 2 nothing series lead. And we can say that for the first time. 2 nothing series lead. I mean, Jackson, they hadn't even... They hadn't even gotten through the first two games of the first two finals, uh, even tied 1-1. Nope. I mean, they hadn't even had home ice. But we were even talking about pre-recording about the Panthers 8-3 and three at home in the postseason. And, I mean, it, it, this takes me back to just the final four home games and just the focus level for the Panthers going into that, uh, going into the postseason, getting those four straight wins, game 82, Getting get and and making sure you start off on the right tone. I mean, and also everything is everything is catching up in a good way for the Panthers as far as not not long commute because of their where their homes are at to the practice facility. Round one because Tampa is right there, and all and also like you, I know you mentioned the the charter flights for two days off, but 
uh, but the two days, but the but the two days for them beneficial for them, and it's really, and it and it's really been helpful for them. Um, even going back to even those last four, even those last four home games, eight and three at home for for the Panthers. I mean, protecting home ice. They say the series does not start until the home team loses, and doing this all with breaking the Oilers PK streak at thirty four. The power play can be a little better. Uh, we 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 spoke about we we spoke about pre-recording how uh, the entries were were not were not great for the Panthers and, and but still finding different ways to win and 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 just for for them I mean how how are you, how are you feeling about the fact that Panthers were pinned in their own end and then able to just rebound and also you have a little bit of a stat about uh, about that that what you said about something that's happened previously to this year. Uh, so I, the floor is yours, my friend. All right. So I can guess I can just take this uh, a number of ways. What I will say is, is that I remember coming on this podcast, I believe it was after the Rangers game when they, they blew a lead late in the third period. They had like a two nothing lead. Then they had a four, three lead with a few minutes left. Then they blow it and they lose. And I said, well, home ice matters. It matters. You see mm-hmm. why it matters? They're eight and three at home. Yep. Teams usually win when they're at home. I know the playoffs have gone funky. I know it's been weird, but it's better to be at home than it is on the road. That's mm-hmm. just how it is. Now, as far as uh, more to that, though, honestly, because here's the thing, Armando, I have to tell you a story. I have to tell everyone a story here. <laughs> going a little bit off the record. I'm, I'm uh-huh. not off the record. I'm going a little off base. I'm 0-4 going into tonight. I was 0-4 watching Stanley Cup games on television Hmm. because the one game that they won last year, I was at the game. That was cool. And game one, I was at my girlfriend's grandma's 80th birthday. So I couldn't watch. I had to watch it back the next day, but I already knew the outcome and everything. I had seen the highlights. So... They're trailing one nothing at the end of the first period, and I'm pissed. Uh-huh. I'm pissed. I'm pissed because I'm 0-4 when I'm watching on television. This is ridiculous. I'm in New York City right now. Someone gives me this idea. I go outside. I leave my apartment. I go outside. I literally can send you the videos. I touch the ground. I touch the sidewalk because I need some outside energy. Come back for the second period. They tie the game. I do the same thing for the third period. Superstition. Touch the, touch the sidewalk, come back up. They win. So rest assured, perhaps the Panthers are winning at home or perhaps they're winning Stanley Cup games when I'm watching television because I'm touching the sidewalk with my right index finger, which to you looks like the left. Sorry, I went a little bit off the record, or not off the record, a little off base there, but I had a little story to tell you. Superstitions, they matter. <laughs> They, they they do and uh and 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 i mean for 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 the panthers i mean for just their their ability to just adjust is just incredible uh for for them and just how how bill zito continues to just build their this team with waiver claims um i mean you're, you're thinking about all the top picks from elsewhere coming over here and and this this is a good opportunity for us to switch gears a little bit uh just the fact that the Panthers have built this this uh, consistency. He's he's been a finalist for the Jim Gregory Award three out of the last four years, and he hasn't won. The, it was just announced. It was just announced today. That's why we're we're transitioning to this topic. It was announced before Game Two that Jim Nill has won the second straight season. Uh, GM of the Dallas Stars. He's built a he's built a he, great contender there through the 2017 and the 2021 draft. If you guys want to look that up uh, yourselves. But what does Bill Zito have to do uh, to, to finally get a Jim Gregory Award? But David Dwork of, of uh, the Hockey News, my, my colleague, also tweeted saying, uh, even before the season, Bill Zito wants that Stanley Cup. So if he ends up getting that, which dos mas, it, it's almost, we can taste it, but it doesn't feel real at the same time, I will admit. He's, he's, Bill Zito was snubbed once again. So your thoughts on that? Yeah, Jim Nil is a great GM 
and I'm sure he's thrilled that he is currently watching like the rest of us with his GM of the year trophy. While Bill Zito, <laughs> for the second straight year, is in the Stanley Cup and now two wins away. And what's more egregious about this year, because last year he was nominated, but he, he didn't, I don't think Zito deserved it for last year. No they moves only the had, headline. <laughs> they only had 92 points in the regular season. I don't think that's enough. Even though the award is awarded after the second round, that's when they vote. 92 points in the regular season. Don't think that's enough really to get GM of the year, particularly for a team that was expected to do more than 92 points. Mm -hmm. This year, there was no excuse. They had 110 points. They won the Atlantic division. Every single move that Zito made this off season has pretty much worked, right? Oh, Evan yeah. Rodriguez is Kulikov, good. Mikola. Kulikov, Mikola. Lance. A lot of people criticize the Mikola move. It's a good move. It's looking pretty good right now. How about Oliver Ekman Larson? Took the chance on him for one year. It's worked out. He traded out Anthony Duclair to get in Evan Rodriguez, as you just mentioned. I, I, I He brought in Anthony Stolarz. I, I don't know what Bill Zito has to do to win GM of the year anymore. It's kind of ridiculous. But I, I guess he'll settle for the Stanley Cup, which we all know you'd rather win GM of the year than Stanley Cup. I mean, <laughs> I mean obviously. So. I don't know what he has to do, but quite frankly, if I were him, I don't care. Yeah. You're two wins away. Yeah. That's the focus. You're two wins away. <laughs> It's still relating to the conversation I had uh, on yesterday's pod about what David Sampson said uh, about the Atlanta Braves 14 division titles to the Marlins two uh, World Series titles. Like rings, rings, baby. Uh, that, that's that's really what it comes down to. What's for, the for point the, of the game? Yeah, is that, it to win awards or is it to win the ring? Yeah, it's funny because uh, uh, quickly uh, because the Jaff Combine just happened uh, in in Buffalo. So it's funny because uh, the stories that that would happen coming out for uh, Dale Talon, uh, some of the some of the questions would be: you have to take this one pill, uh, and it takes ten years off your life, and then the other one is like, uh, you 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 live uh, ten years longer, but you don't win the cup, but, and also asking those hard questions too. I don't know. I don't, I think I might be botching how that question uh, was asked, but I kind of get the gist of what you're saying. Yeah. So, would, would you rather win the Stanley Cup? and lose 10 years off your life or not win the Stanley cup and gain 10 years on your life. Yeah. So the, the, and when you, and when you talk to even draft prospects and just about like when they're entering there, there, it's a job interview. That's really what it is. So you, you, when they scout you, you're just like, you're going to try to make the difference. We want to look at you to see if you can make the difference for our franchise. And I mean, the story of Sam Bennett couldn't do a pull-up and then was taken to a park to see if he could uh, do, do pull-ups. And he did 10 within a month. So that hard work ethic for someone even like him too. Uh, so that's really when you look and you scout and you uh, develop guys and you see how much hard work they're doing behind the scenes. The first guys in, first first guys out, even Bobrovsky, even going from undrafted to two-time Vesna uh, to just two wins away too. So it, it just really comes down to just the hard work that all these guys just individually. Stephen Lawrence, a guy who just bangs the body, big big body guy, always smiling too. Not not anyone has a bad thing to say about him being uh, in the in the Panthers ECHL feel it when he was part of the Carolina Hurricanes too. Just so just different stories of different guys and just how how they're just so not only grateful to be here but just how their hard work is paying off. You know what they call the twenty third man on a Stanley Cup winning roster. You know what they mm -hmm. call him? Mm -hmm. They call him a Stanley Cup champion. Yes. That's what they call him. The goal is to win. Mm -hmm. And at this point, nothing else matters. You're going to get... See, here's the thing, Armando. If they win two more games, and hopefully they do. I know a lot of people talk about the state income tax, and there's a whole controversy about it, and it's ridiculous. But there's also something that might happen, which is called the Stanley Cup tax. You're all going to get paid. Yep. You're going to get paid. Yep. You win the cup, you will get paid. Mm -hmm. You might get more than what you're really worth mm -hmm. because you help the team win the cup. The only thing that matters is winning the Stanley Cup. Yep. That's it. It's great to be up 2 nothing in the series. I'm very happy. This is uncharted territory. We've never been very up 2 nothing in the Stanley Cup Finals. We had never been up one nothing in the Stanley Cup Finals. We never had a, a lead in a Stanley Cup Series. It's a great feeling. It's fantastic. But it's only it, two more wins. 
two more. And this then- is this year is so much different than last year. Last year was special because it was a magical fairy tale ride, a team that had high expectations, then barely made the playoffs, and then somehow lost all the deserve a win meters and went to the Stanley Cup before they ultimately <laughs> lost. Yep. And it was so cool. And I remember thinking to myself, it's so great, but you're not guaranteed to get back. Nope. You're not. The San Jose Sharks had a 15-year run of being some of the of having some of the best teams in hockey. They got there once. They never got back. You're not guaranteed. Nope. So I was upset when they lost. This year has been surgical. It's like, Great oh, work. we got Tampa. No problem. We got Boston. No problem. Rangers. No problem. We're two more wins away. Yep. And even, and even with some guys who aren't even playing, who were a big part of that runs of Ryan Lomberg and Nick Cousins, just the fact that they're still ultimate team guys, even when they're not playing. So that's also the great thing about uh, just the team effort that, that this team just puts together in order to just try to build what you, the ultimate goal, a champion. That's what that, and still lots of work to be, to be done. Two more uh, before, Two more before the Panthers. Uh, can call themselves champions. But Jackson, I want to thank you so much for joining me on this edition of the Locked On Florida Panthers podcast. Uh, a, a successful podcast and a successful game for the Florida Panthers. Two nothing series lead for them. Tell everybody where they can follow you online, my friend. Of course. Well, you can see my Twitter below, but in case you're listening, it's at Jackson H underscore 52. That's my personal Twitter account. You can also, if you're a Syracuse fan, basketball, football, you can follow us at at L-O underscore Syracuse for all your Syracuse content. Awesome. Thank you so much, my friend, and hope to see you soon. Of course. And if you like what you're hearing, please subscribe to the podcast to be notified every single time the Lockdown Florida Panthers podcast jumps into your podcast feed. Don't forget to also subscribe to the other shows on the Lockdown NHL Network, including Lockdown NHL, Lockdown Fantasy Hockey, Flip Livingstone, and Steve Roden, and Lockdown NHL Prospects. Thank you once again for making the Lockdown Florida Panthers podcast your First listen of the day. So I'm Armando Velez with Jackson Holzer. And you've been listening to the Locked On Florida Panthers podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, where it's your team every day.